welcome back to Seelin Plays Doki Doki Literature Club. And I kind of don't remember what happened last time, although we had to practice for a festival coming up, so there was that. Anyway, let's see what Pumna writes today. I really hope for Yuri again, but I don't think it'll be fair for Sayori and Natsuki either, so maybe I'll do a mix of all of them. So, yeah, we'll do friends, hurt, oh wow, um, nightgown. Uh, jumpy. Oh wow, I'm getting Sayori and Natsuki a, a whole bunch again. Yay, we got some of Yuri in here. Okay. Doki Doki, I don't know. Disaster. Inferno. Uh. Mis explode? Yes. Determination. Philosophy. Yes, I think we got most of Yuri. I don't know. Okay, sorry about that. I was checking something because I heard that this game can mess with the files from the game on your computer, so I'm keeping a lookout for that. Anyways. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry, I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Uh, you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. But it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people. Uh, I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Huh? Yeah, I don't get that part either, Monica. <laughs> That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Huh? Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own events for now, okay? I got a question. Where's Sayori? Eh. Fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. <laughs> Excuse me. Where is Sayori anyway? Yeah, I just asked that like 10 seconds ago. <laughs> oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room looking down at nothing. Uh-oh. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Huh? You're spacing out again. Uh, eh, sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. S Sayori, I'm getting worried about you, girl. Please, girl. Huh? Is everything all right? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? You're hiding something and I'm not gonna be very happy about it, I think. Sayori shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, all right. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. 
Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Salen, what's up? Uh, hey, this might sound a little strange, but have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there's something on her mind, but I'm surprised. I'm not the one asking you, Selin. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really liked this. Yep, it's a sign something's wrong. This is not good. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just wanted to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me, too. In what way? Oh, well, I guess she's a club member, too. That works. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Eh, are you sure about that? She seemed like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just had a hard time bringing it up with the person of her interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Selin. Oh, God. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sayori talks about you more than anything else, you know? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since she joined the club. It's like an extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. <sighs> You're so funny, Selin. Have you thought that maybe you always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you. Uh. Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry. What do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Uh, alright. Monica smiles meanfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I wouldn't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori's sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her. But she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from right here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like that. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Why does it feel like I'm being watched? Oh, I'm scared now. I glance around the room. Oh, thank God. I thought a jump scare was going to happen or something. Suddenly, I notice Yuri peering at me from over her book. But she looks away just as quickly with a flustered look on her face. I realize that she won't get anywhere like this. I've never really seen Yuri approach anyone or start a conversation on her own accord. So I have no choice but to approach her myself. By now, it's a little easier for me to do that. I stand up from my desk and sit in one seat next to her own. Uh, I didn't mean to bother you or anything. Relax, you didn't do anything. But I couldn't tell that you wanted to be alone with your thoughts. Alone with my thoughts? How were you even able to tell that I was thinking like that? Well, it's something that I could do a lot. So it wasn't hard for me to spot 
based on your posture and expression. No, not that I was staring or anything. I didn't do anything creepy like that. In any case, I guess you were right. I'm sorry if I caused you any concern. Don't apologize. Your troubles are only the concern of those who willingly share in that concern. Of course, there are certainly those who find the most comfort in keeping to themselves. But if you would prefer to share what's on your mind, then I would be glad to listen. Uh, it's really not that big of a deal. I was just feeling a bit uneasy about Sayori. Sayori? Yeah, she seems a little off today, but when I asked her about it, she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh? That's quite romantic. Oh? Uh? So, sorry. I didn't mean to say something stupid. It's not that. I just didn't want you to misunderstand. Sayori and I have just been friends for a long time, that's all. Ah, uh, I see. Then perhaps it is unusual for her to be dismissive to you about her feelings. Or maybe I'm just reading into it a little too much. Seelin, the world is full of meaning, often hidden deep beneath plain sight. And there are many untold mysteries behind every person, no matter how well you may know them. Oh, so you think there might be something behind it after all. Hmm, I think that Sayori is a very complex person. Her mannerisms on the outside don't always match what may be going on inside her head. And she may not always know what she wants. I noticed her strange behavior today too. And I also feel some concern for her. But in your case, it looked like she was fully occupying your thoughts, wasn't she? Well, I guess that was the case. Sayori, she really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Uh, I, I guess. But you don't need to put it that way. We're just good friends, that's all. Uh, Yuri suddenly looks deeply into my eyes. Her expression is gentle and curious, as if she was searching for something. Embarrassed, I avert my gaze. Sometimes, a person's mysteries are untold even to themselves. And you, as someone honest and caring, may uncover feelings you weren't aware were in you. Th that is, I think that she would be a very fortunate person to have you feel that way about her. Yuri, you're giving me too much credit. I'm a pretty simple girl. I know it says guy, but like I said, I'm alternating the dialogue because I'm playing as a girl character. So I think I'm pretty good at understanding my own feelings. I'm not nearly as sophisticated as you. Uh, that's not a compliment, is it? It is what it is. Anyway, as long as we're here, why don't we do some reading? Well, as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, I should be taking my mind off this whole thing anyway. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Yes, let's. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that I can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf. The kind with a filter inside. Can you hold this for a second? Sure! Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at a teacher's desk and then we'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. Creepy! To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs. Yuri appears elegant and methodical. Oh, God. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks. I'll be right back. Uh, I might as well walk with you. Yeah, why not? Shall we go, then? Yeah. Huh? Where are you two off to? Uh, we're just... Yuri was going to make some tea, so... I suddenly realized how weird it sounds to explain this to Monica. We're just spilling the water pitcher. Uh, okay. Sorry, I was just a bit curious. That's kind of a one-person job, isn't it? That's... 
Monica, please mind your own business for once. Or do you want to tell me there's something wrong with helping involve sealing in club activities? Uh, uh, my mouth escapes. <gasps> <laughs> I, I suppose there's nothing wrong with that. Are you sure about that? Huh, <sighs> then let's go, sealing. Uh, Yuri quickly exits the room and I follow. Once in the hallway, she suddenly puts her forehead against the wall. Oh, poor thing. I spoke without thinking. How could I say something like that? Yuri, I just... Something about the way she said that. It made me feel so... Irritated. What's wrong with me? No, Yuri. I think you did the right thing. I wasn't expecting it, but... It's also not right for Monica to judge people like that. Ceylon, how come even when I do something bad, you're being nice to me? Because I have feelings for you. <laughs> Anyways, nothing that you do is, a, is as bad as you make it seem in your head. Nobody's perfect. We have emotions, and we can't always hide them away. But you always amplify things in your head. Your mind turns a light rain shower into a hurricane. Uh, no, no. Wouldn't you hate me for something as terrible as that? Why would I hate you? I can't hate someone for having emotions. What kind of friend would do that? Friend, you say? Uh, um. Yuri lifts her head. Ceiling. I really like being friends with you. Uh-huh. Thanks, Yuri. I like being friends with you, too. I feel kind of awkward saying something like that. But I'm doing my best to help Yuri feel better. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Shall we go? Yeah. Yuri and I walk to the nearest water fountain. That's a nice hallway, by the way. Once we fill up the water pitcher, we return it to the classroom. Simon, do you like oolong tea? Uh, no. I never had oolong tea. Is that fancy? Uh, yeah. Anything's fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert or tea or anything? Huh. <sighs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Ah, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided I would try expressing myself a little bit more. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Ceylon. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I could keep up with this. I watch Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. Ceylon, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Oh, uh, why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over on my desk. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why is that? It's most likely because my... Uh... My... My... Your... Pa posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading. Yes? I have terrible reading posture. So that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ah, oh, I have some chocolate as well. Whoa! Going crazy there, I see you. I see you, girl. It's a bag of small chocolate candies that I kept hidden from Sayori's candy radar. I take it since it'll go well with the tea. 
You reunite, then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume we're the same reading p position as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. Whoa. I can't see too well. Uh. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. Whoa. Okay. How am I supposed to focus on reading like this? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup, holding it with my hand that's not holding the book. I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch your chest. Yeah, that'll be awkward. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Uh, that's... That's okay. I won't take any. Huh? Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. True, true. Oh, yeah, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any hard over of time of reading from it. I, yeah, I read that wrong, sorry. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Ooh. Well, in that case, Yuri's already totally focused on reading again. I take the chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. Then I take another chocolate, ooh, and I hold it up to Yuri, ooh. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply parts her lips as if this situation was completely natural. But that means I can't stop her. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Uh, Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me like she needs to confirm what just happened. Uh, um... Ceiling. S sorry I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, that's... Well... You were just helping. That's something that friends do. Right? I mean... Not really in this kind of context, but... Yeah. That's all it was. Yeah. Then... You don't need to stop or anything. Uh, I see. The situation has gotten really tense. Yuri tries to return to the book. But I can tell just by her expression that even she can't focus now. My heart is pounding. I nervously take another chocolate between my fingers. But this time, Yuri's eyes meet mine. Ooh. Uh. How did it even come to this? Yuri doesn't avert her gaze. I notice her chest rising and falling to the rhythm of her breasts. I raise my arm. You're gonna wrap your arm around Yuri, aren't you? Uh. Like before, Yuri parts her lips. But it's different this time. I take the chocolate and place it in her mouth. Again. I feel her hot breath on my fingers. Oh, come on! Monica! I think we were about to kiss. Why did you have to ruin that for me? <laughs> okay, everyone. Uh, uh, uh. Yuri jolts back. It's time to share poems. Selin, you can help Yuri put away the tea stuff, right? Y yeah of course. Okay, thanks. The spell is abruptly broken. Thanks, Monica. Oh, I'll take care of the cuffs. Yeah. Yuri picks the teacups from the floor. I pick up the bag of chocolates. 
In the end, we hastily clean up without so much as a word between us. I get the feeling this is something neither of us will have the courage to bring up. Pong time! Ah, uh, let's do Yuri again. Seelin, your writing has only improved in these last few days. Every poem you show me has been nothing short of a spectacular. I can really feel the emotions. I'm a little envious, even. I don't think it ever came to me this naturally. Yuri, that's the wrong way to put it. This never did come naturally to me, but I've been able to improve so much thanks to you. You're really the example I was chasing after. Uh, is that so? Yuri gently smiles to herself. This feeling. I'm so glad I got the chance to share my writing. I never thought it would feel like this. I remember you mentioning that yesterday. I can't believe that you're so good at something and you've never even shared it with anyone. It's kind of a shame. Maybe, but... It's not like I really had a choice. What do you mean? Well... Yuri smiles sadly. Sadly? Oh no! Celan, during lunchtime, I eat by myself. Oh! <laughs> you and me! I can sit with you! Did you know that? It's a great time to find a quiet spot and do some reading. In fact, I always have some books with me. You could say I really enjoy reading. Well, that's one way to put it anyway. But books are so full of amazing and inspiring people. The music is so beautiful in the background, it's sad. People you want to fall in love with. Or people you just know would make a really good friend. Cheerful people who always put a smile on your face. Or deep thinkers and problem solvers who discover the mysteries of life. So when you look at it that way, I'm surrounded by friends every day, you know? And those friends don't laugh at me. They don't tease me for spacing out all the time. They don't make fun of my body type. And and they don't hate me for acting like a know-it-all. People say that about you? I'm not a know-it-all, Selin. It's the opposite. I don't know anything. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't know how to make people see me as normal. I don't even know how to make myself happy. I have all these feelings, and all I could do with them is read and write. But it wasn't until now that I started sharing it with you that I really understood what was missing all this time. But I haven't really done anything. No, that's wrong. Just being patient and respectful. That's really important to me. Oh, thank you, Yuri. I know I'm a difficult person, Selin. I speak too slowly. I second guess myself all the time. I read too deeply into things. But every time, you've always treated me just like anyone else. It's so rare that I feel comfortable with myself when I talk to others. But that's why every time I talk to you, I just feel really happy. I see! Well, I treat you how you deserve to be treated, Yuri. And if other people don't see it that way, then screw them! I mean, I just joined this club hoping I would make friends. And I would say I've had at least one success. Wouldn't you? Uh, um, if you put it that way, yeah, we really are friends now, aren't we? Yuri puts her head in her hands, but this time she's smiling as she does it. Do you want me to show you your poem? Yeah, I do. Let me get it for you. Beach! I marvel millions of years in the making, when the womb of Earth chaotically meets the surface, under a clean blue sky, an expense of bliss. But beneath the gray rolling clouds and endless e eggma, I think, I don't know, I can't read cursive. The easiest one to get lost in is one where everything can be found. One can only build a sand castle where the sand is wet. But where the sand is wet, the tide comes. Will it gently kick at you at your foundations until you give in? Or will a sudden wave send you crashing down in the blink of an eye? Either way, the outcome is the same. Yet we still build sand castles. I stand where the foam unwraps around my ankles. 
where my toes are squished into the sand. The salty air is therapeutic. The breeze is gentle yet powerful. I sink my toes into the ultimate boundary liner, tempted by the foaming tendrils. Turn back and I abandon my peace suit and rode at the shore. Drift forward and I return to Earth forevermore. Sorry if I read the poem wrong. Like I mentioned, I cannot read cursive. Um, I'm aware that the beach is kind of an inane thing to write about. But I did my best to take a metaphorical approach to it. You say that like you didn't even want to write about it. Oh, you haven't heard? After yesterday, Natsuki and I, well... It was amusing that we wrote about something similar in such different ways. So Natsuki wanted us to write about the same topic as each other again. I suppose to better compare the differences in our writing styles or thought processes. Anyway, it was her idea. Knowing her, it's no surprise that she'd want to do something like that. She probably just wanted to show off. It's not like I have a particular interest in her writing style. I just went with her request. But... Well, I suppose it's not so bad to write about something simple on occasion. It can be refreshing, you know? It's good for me to calm my thoughts once in a while. Yeah, I think I agree. Thanks for sharing. And let's do Natsuki next. This one's alright. Alright. Well, yeah. It doesn't blow me away. But there's nothing I really hate about it. It's just not really my style. I mean, that's fine. Come to think of it, this kind of reminds me of Sayori's poem from yesterday. Huh? You think so? Yeah, well, I guess if you've been friends with her for so long, you might be on the same wavelength. But you never really struck me as her type. Sayori has a type all of a sudden? Well, I don't know, but honestly, how can someone so, uh, fluffy spend so much time with someone like you? It's like she's dragging around a dead weight. Uh, that was a little unnecessary. But think of it this way. If it weren't for me, she would probably just fly away like letting go of a balloon. You could say we each take care of each other in our own way. Whatever it is, I don't get it. Oh yeah, I guess I'm supposed to show you my poem now. Here. I'll be your beach. Your mind is so full of troubles and fears that diminished your wonder over the years. But today, I have a special place. A beach for us to go. A shore reaching be beyond your sight. A sea that sparkles with bright light. The walls in your mind will melt away. Before the sunny glow. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap. In a way you thought had left you long ago. Let's bury your heavy thoughts in a pile of sand. Bathe in sunbeams and hold my hand. Wash your insecurities in the salty sea. And let me see you shine. Let's leave your memories in the footprint trail. Set you free in my windy sail. And remember the reasons you're wonderful when you press your lips to mine. I'll be the beach that washes your worries away. I'll be the beach that you daydream about each day. I'll be the beach that makes your heart leap in a way you thought I had left you long ago. But if you let me by your side, your own beach, your own escape, you'll learn to love yourself again. That was nice. Yeah. I felt like I kept writing about negative things, so I wanted to write something with a nice message for once. Besides, the beach is awesome. Kinda hard to write anything negative about the beach. Yeah, that's true. Well, Yuri's take on it was a little more solemn. Well, that's... Jeez, she better not have said anything bad about mine. After all, she was the one who wanted us to write about the same topic. Ugh. You can really see her doing that, too. Making us write about a simple topic, then trying to impress me by coming up with something all fancy. Well, it's not like I care. I just did it anyway. I mean, I guess mine ended up being kind of metaphorical, too. 
But there's nothing wrong with doing that once in a while. At the very least, it was good practice. Let's do say over here. Always do Monica last. I don't know why you. Huh? It's nice, I guess. Come on, I can already tell you don't like it. Well, you don't need to worry about what I think. After all, you wrote this for someone else, didn't you? Oh, uh, I guess. Probably Yuri. Uh, I didn't write this for anyone specifically. Maybe. That's not really what I meant, though. But it's okay. You're making new friends, just like I was hoping. That makes me really happy. And you're happy too, right? In this club? Well, of course I am. Good. That's all that matters to me. Thank you, Selin. Say over you. Is there something wrong? Huh? No, nothing. I'm just a little tired today. <laughs> All right. Just tell me if you need anything. I will. Don't worry about me, okay? Oh, if you say that, it's gonna make me worry about you even more. You can go play with everyone else now. If you insist. Yay! I'm gonna go home a little bit early today. Sayori! Tell Monica I wasn't feeling well, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Before I could say anything, Sayori cheerfully walks out of the classroom, humming to herself. I'm getting a little worried. So I'm guessing Sayori didn't write a poem. I wanted to read it though, but okay. I guess we'll go to Monica. Hi, Seelin. Have you thought about what you want to submit to perform at the festival? Oh shit, I forgot about that. Well... Being in this club is one thing, but performing in front of a bunch of people... I'll have to give it some more thought. Okay, no pressure. But whatever you do, I'm sure it'll turn out great. It would also make me happy to see you. Huh. Anyway, let's take a look at today's poem. Sure. I'll let Monica take the poem I'm holding in my hands. This one's good. It feels like you're not only getting more comfortable with your style, but the imagery is better than the last one I read. Just wondering, but have you been finding inspiration in Yuri's writing style? Uh, I guess so. You can't deny that she's talented. Yeah, totally. I think her poems are the most romantic. Uh, they have a deep meaning last I checked, but okay. That's the best way to describe it. She's like a totally different person when she picks up a pen. I noticed that too. Or when she's talking about literature, it's like a light turns on inside her. Hmm? Sadly, it's hard to get much personal conversation out of her. Trust me, I tried. Who knows what goes on in that head of hers? I hope you don't mean that in a bad way. No, of course not. I just meant that I wish she didn't keep so much to herself. But still defending her like that. You must be pretty into her. Oh, stop. <laughs> uh, you completely misunderstood. <sighs> Calm down, I'm just kidding. Besides, I'm pretty sure she already got a boyfriend. Wait, what? Yeah, a fictional one anyway. Monica kind of whispers that last part to me. It's just a hunch, but... Well, there's not really anything wrong with that. Oh, well, I know. I was just saying. Anyway, I'll share my poem with you now, okay? Uh, okay. A lady who knows everything. An old tale tells of a lady who wanders earth. The lady who knows everything. A beautiful lady who has found every answer. All meaning, all purpose, and all that was ever sought. And here I am, a feather. La lost to drift the sky, victim of the currents of the wind. Day after day I search, I search with little hope, knowing legends don't exist. But when all else has failed me, 
when all others have turned away. The legend is all that remains. The last dim star glimmering in the twists in the twilight sky. Until one day, the wind ceases to blow. I fall, and I fall and fall and fall even more. Gentle as a feather, a dry quill expressionless. But a hand catches me between the thumb and forefinger, the hand of a beautiful lady. I look at her eyes and find no end to her gaze. The lady who knows everything knows what I am thinking. Before I can speak, she responds in a hollow voice. I have found every answer, all of which amount to nothing. There is no meaning. There is no purpose. Always seek only the impossible. I am not your legend. Your legend does not exist. And with a breath, she blows me back afloat, and I pick up a gust of wind. You know, I feel like learning and looking for answers are the sorts of things that give life meaning. Not to get too philosophical or anything, but it was kind of on the mind, so that's what I wrote about. I see. I never really put much thought into it. In a way, it's almost paradoxical. Because if we had all the answers, wouldn't the world start to lose its meaning? You know, there's one thing I noticed. It seems like everyone else in the club prefers writing about things that are more sad than happy. Ha! Huh, are you surprised? I mean, if everything was okay, we wouldn't really have anything to write about, would we? Humans aren't two-dimensional creatures. I think you know that better than anyone. You mean one-dimensional? Huh, yeah, that. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Are you ever too shy to share your writing because you're afraid if it's not that good? It can be really disheartening to get a lukewarm response to something you put so much into. But if you find other people who enjoy writing, then sharing becomes a lot easier. Because instead of just telling you that your writing is good or okay or bad, they want to focus more on everything that went into it and the things you can work on. It's much more encouraging that way and it will make you want to continue improving. It's almost like having your own literature club, don't you think? That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay, you three. We're all done sharing poems, right? Why don't we start figuring out? Hold on a second. Is it just me or did you say something strange just now? Huh? Something did sound a bit unusual. That's right. You deviated from your usual catchphrase when addressing the club. Uh, catchphrase? I don't have a catchphrase. Jeez, why is the mood so weird today? Look, even Yuri isn't immune to it. Oh, stagnating air is common foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Uh-oh, in your books, maybe. Look, the only thing different is that Sayori isn't here. Uh, it seems you're right. <sighs> Sayori always helps lighten the mood a little bit, doesn't she? It's almost like everyone's balance is thrown off a little when she's not around. Where the heck did she run off to anyway? I thought she just went to use the bathroom. Natsuki, please show some decency. Oh, come on. Uh, she actually wasn't feeling too well, so she went home early. Is that so? I hope she's alright. Seriously? Of all the times to not go home with her, you picked a time she's not feeling well? So much for you two being all lovely dovey. Uh, no. First of all, stop misunderstanding my friendship with Sayori. And second, she's kind of been avoiding me today, so I didn't want to force it. Huh? That curious expression coming from Yuri of all people? Calm down, guys. I talked to her earlier and everything's fine. What did she say? Anyway, we need to figure out the rest of the festival preparations, so... Let's decide what everyone will be doing this weekend. I already know what I'm doing. That's right. Natsuki will be making cupcakes. Big ears. But we might need a lot of them. In different flavors. Can you handle that all by yourself, Natsuki? Challenge accepted. As for myself... I'm going to be printing and assembling all the poetry pamphlets. Sayori will be helping me design them. And as for you, Yuri... Yuri, you can... Uh, um... Guys? Can you help me come up with something for Yuri? I... I'm useless. No, no! That's not it at all! 
You're the most talented person here, you know. No, Natsuki's pouting too. Jeez, even I can tell now. I guess I never gave Sayori enough credit, but I can tell things are even harder on you when she's not around. Ah, uh, that may be the case. But if I can't also be a leader on my own, then I won't grow as a person. So, Yuri, you, you have beautiful handwriting, you know. So you should make banners and decorations to help set the atmosphere. Atmosphere? Um, about that. I, I love atmosphere. Yuri's expression suddenly changes as she stares at her desk in focus and starts nodding to herself. Your mind is already racing, I see. That's great. You'll be a wonderful help, Yuri. But anyway, that just leaves you, Selin. The one who truly is useless. <laughs> Don't say that. In fact, both Natsuki and Yuri have some pretty heavy tasks to handle. It would probably go a long way to give one of them a hand. You can always help me out as well. I would be really appreciative of that. Uh, that's... Is Monica suggesting I spend the weekend with one of my club members? How on earth are they going to respond to such a suggestion like that? Uh, I suppose I wouldn't mind a bit of help. Well, even if you don't like the bags, there's always some dirty work I could give to you. It's not like Monica's going to give me a choice and you shouldn't be sitting on your butt anyway. That's what he tries to mumble a bunch of excuses like that. Um... If I recall, Natsuki, you mentioned that you would like to handle the baking on your own. Selin may not like to be around if you only make her out to be a nuisance. So therefore, she may be more suited to assisting with the decorations. Hold on, I never said that. How hard could it be to make a few decorations anyway? Sounds more like you're just making excuses for Selin too. Well, what are you saying? It will be extremely meticulous work. And baking isn't. Just what do you think? Guys, guys, let's settle down for a moment. In the end, I think it's up to Seelin to decide how she'd like to contribute. Besides, she hasn't really gotten a chance to spend any time with me yet, you know. So I'm sure she's interested in... You literally just said... Uh, I'm surprised as well. Sorry, sorry. I was just saying, though. Jeez. Can we just settle this already? Yeah. Selin, you're okay with this, right? In the end, it's up to you. Uh, of course. Huh. Very well. In that case... Everyone looks straight at me. But of course, I'm going to go with... Uh... Let's do Sayori. I mean... If it's going to be anyone, then I prefer helping Sayori. I mean, we're already neighbors and... But Monica said... Monica said that Sayori was helping her. Jeez. Do you really hate us that much? N no Sorry, I didn't mean for this to be difficult. Just think of the club, okay? Alright, so... I'm a little worried about Sayori, but... Uh, Monica? <laughs> Well, I guess I should probably be helping Monica. Yay, you picked me. Hold on a second. Yeah. Monica, you're the one who needs the least help out of all of us. Huh? But... Uh, I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already most suitable for one person, but you already have Sayori as well. Uh, yeah, you're, you got a point. But Selin was the one who... Uh, that doesn't matter. You were the one who scared her into picking you in the first place. I guess that's true. You're the club president, Monica. You're supposed to make responsible decisions for the club. Monica, you shouldn't let any ulterior motives interfere with this decision. Ulterior motives? But what are you saying, Yuri? In fact, it sounds like you guys are the ones with ulterior motives. Excuse me? Otherwise, this wouldn't have been made into such a big deal in the first place. That's completely false, Monica. Yeah. <laughs> That's sounding so manly. I'm sorry. We have a lot of work to do, you know. 
We don't do as good of a job if you make us work alone. Yeah, I guess that's also true. Uh, maybe that's true. That's what I said, Monica. Think of the club, Monica. If we want our event to succeed, then we need to appropriately distribute our resources. Um... Uh... So, are you going to do the right thing, President? Oh, burn, Natsuki. Okay, okay. I get it. <sighs> it's technically your most logical for sealing to help one of you two. So, I guess that's what we'll do. Do you have a preference, Ceylon? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not really, I mean... Although Natsuki did say that she'll be fine doing the cupcakes on her own. So I think Yuri needs more help than Natsuki. That's my opinion. Although making cupcakes sounds really good right now. Anyway, we'll just go with Yuri. Well, I'll probably be, be most useful helping out Yuri. But me? Are you serious? Yes, I guess. Why would you? Natsuki, I can already tell you were about to say something mean. No, no. I was just saying. Ugh. So, you'll be helping Yuri then, Seelin? Yes. Yup. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sorts of things. So, I think your assistance will be very... Useful. I was gonna say helpful, but close enough. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah. I already said I would be fine. Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. So, is that everything we needed to go over? So, yeah, can I just go home now? <laughs> Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Yeah, me, not really, because I'm sick right now, but... Yeah, I'm excited. Well, excited may not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Seelin? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how things turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Uh, Natsuki's probably not gonna answer you. Uh, yeah, I figured. Natsuki, what? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything. Uh, no, that's not what I meant at all. Uh, Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. Uh, I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Seelin picked me. And also, your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it. I'm kinda surprised, though. But why? Um... Well, I'm the one acting immature. I already know that. But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden. Uh, I know. I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken back by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfectly, I can tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. No, I kind of appreciated it. I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing, but I'm going to say this. Huh? You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event. Uh, I believe you. Yeah, I hope to see everyone do their best. But with that, there is nothing more for today. So I guess it's time for us to head out. All right. Let's get out of here then. Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Um. Uh? 
I turn around. Sorry. I've realized I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh yeah. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Should I give you my phone number? Oh, <laughs> sailing going in for the kill. I think that would be the best way, yes. All right then. Yuri and I exchange phone numbers. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Uh, my house? Uh, is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought I would be the one going to your house, since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Whoa, okay. Alright then. In that case, it won't be a problem. I just gotta clean my house. <laughs> I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I managed to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Seelin. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait, you don't actually think that, do you? Uh. I don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you might have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. But, but, Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You wanted me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Uh, I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Don't you believe me? Uh, Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah. I am too. After that exchange, I made my way out the door and Yuri follows. I can't believe this. Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday. Even though I would have preferred to do this for say over you. My anxiety still shoots through the roof. I guess I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point. But who knows what might end up happening when we're outside of school. She even told me she was looking forward to it. I shake my head. Why do I feel nervous that Sayori finds out about this? It's not like we feel that way about each other. Besides, like Monica said, this is about the club. I have nothing to worry about. If I just go with it, then I'll have a good time. It's already Sunday. Well, wait. Okay. That flew by pretty quick. Okay. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri is clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early uh, the other day. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> it's not like we text each other all the time or anything. But I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. It's true. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Well, good question. I don't know. I decided to visit Sayori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her I'm coming over, much like we've done in the past. Once I reach Sayori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. 
Again, we used to play so often that we made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Oh, God. Sayori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. Uh-oh. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Sayori? Hi, Selin. Oh, it's sad music playing. Oh, God. This might make me cry. I don't know. <laughs> I sit down in her room. Sayori forces a smile, but it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Sayori's room is as messy as it's always been. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations she had for years now. Wow. <laughs> if you came over more often, it wouldn't be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it up for you. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? Yeah, but... Wait, how do you know that? Sayori had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, yeah, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up for anything. Ah, so it's just me and Yuri then. Yep. There's more silence between us. Sayori stares in a random direction. Oh no. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday. When something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So... Sayori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Selin. Huh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have even been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. It just wants to torture me. <laughs> Sayori. I grab Sayori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other exclamation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. <laughs> Sayori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Selin. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Wait, what? Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Selin? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Oh! Oh my god! Sayori, please don't make me cry. Did you know that? No! <laughs> Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days, I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. Oh, Sayori, I, I'm so sorry. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Don't say that. Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? 
Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like, Sayori. I'm sorry. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I know, right? I can't even figure out how to respond. How is it possible that Sayori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why Sayori? Eh? Why is it that you never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there is only so much that I could do. I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Seelin. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste effort caring about me instead of doing important things. I don't want to be cared about. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes. But it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. <sighs> That's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone to be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Uh, you're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Sayori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting, that's what I'll do. No, Seelin. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped it is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. And I was punished by my heart hurting in a way that I couldn't understand. And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Sayori's shoulders. This time, I pull her into a tight embrace. Ugh, Salen, Sayori. I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Seelin, Sayori isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Sayori's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. Oh my god. No. Don't do this to me. Please don't do this, Seelin. I... Sayori barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want is for her to know that I care. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Gently, Sayori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Seelin. The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm, and that's really scary too. Sayori lets me go. As she does so, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah, 
It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um... Uh... It's what I want. I promise. I... I think that would be nice then. Yeah. Sayori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. You understand, right? Uh, it's kind of hard for me to fully understand. But I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Alright. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Sayori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri is about to come over too. I think Sayori's right. I shouldn't be worrying too much and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a moment of panic. Yuri! Uh, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decide to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And did you manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it'll be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. It's so clean. Huh. <laughs> I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. Oh, I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she keeps track of them. So, um, should we uh, get started? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help out with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know, mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course, I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. Although it, many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them w wanting more. That's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Uh, intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. You can relax a little. Relax? I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happen to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. 
Ah, oh, like Johanne does. <laughs> That's what reminded me of that. Anyway, I think that would be amazing, don't you? Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all, actually. Oh, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it through your body. I can't pronounce that word right there, so I'm just gonna skip that. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose Jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and helps you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. What I like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will those be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons and create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract someone to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Is that so? Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. <laughs> Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me, or is she more relaxed when it's just the two of us? Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Here's a marker, Seelin. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Oh, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. That's so realistic, I have bad handwriting too. Yuri unravels a long stand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Oh god, please don't point that at me. Uh, the knife is strangely beautiful. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves edged into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Uh, well, embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. To each their own, you know. If you promise you wouldn't be weirded out. Yeah, I promise. All right. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. The combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe. Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Ugh, you're laughing at me. No, I'm not laughing at you. It's just funny how nervous you get about sharing. It's, well, it's an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense, huh? Besides, it's a really cool looking knife, I can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Oh god. <laughs> sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife with the handle facing me. 
I take it and turn it around in my hands. Oh god, I don't have the blade pointing at you. You're gonna hurt yourself, man. Jesus. It feels heavy and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Oh god, really? Ow! Salen, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. Nice going, idiot. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Oh god. Get a band-aid! <laughs> Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. Oh, that's me. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Uh, without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the- oh! Um, Yuri, you're, you're kind of freaking me out here. <laughs> uh, don't put someone else's fingers in your mouth, that's disgusting. I guess putting your own fingers in your own mouth is equally as disgusting, but still... Ew. I feel her tongue curl around- Oh my god. That image needs to get out of my mind. Right now. <laughs> Startled, I intensively pull my hand back. Yeah. Oh. But please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I. Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, sure, it was a little weird and it took me by surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? You know, a normal person would go grab a band-aid and not sit here and have their friend lick your finger for you. <laughs> just saying. Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh -huh. She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I'll do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger and return it. Salen! D did you really just do that? Now we're even. Uh, Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. Uh, I knew that would be a bad idea. If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Selena. Yuri giggles shyly. Uh, Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cut through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected, and it will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great! Good thinking kept up with this, Yuri. Uh, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I'd like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri had asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We need about six cups of water to put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. I put them on a the plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her armor. Oh no. Ah, uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, 
No, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So, I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I looked to paint a gradient across the banner. Started with the colors for sunrise, then daytime, then sunset at nighttime. Once it dries, I read an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Ah, neat! What are you going to write? Well, it will be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling off the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. This kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like the art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know. Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. In fact, I usually don't even want to. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if Yuri and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games, where simply sharing the experience with someone can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush. But I move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. Gah! So sorry. Yuri reels back, and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, no, I'm not hurt. It just stuck on me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. I pat down Yuri's face and neck with the towel. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand. But Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Ooh. Wait. Huh? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Ah. I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. Almost as if she's lost in a daze, enveloped by her own thoughts. She breathes gently half through with slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist, sending a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly, her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah, uh, Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier like she's unable to focus. I remain silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I finish filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's very pretty and natural looking. I think it came out better than I expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. That's true, but won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here. Then have you bring it in the morning. 
I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. You! Huh. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad that we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, uh, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping that we would have extra time after finishing the work. Well, uh, Yuri thinks to herself, I, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seems to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow? Wait! I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over. Or we can go out somewhere. Oh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Seelin. Yuri takes a step closer to me, then briefly squeezes my hand. Oh god. Oh god, hi. And the music stopped. Oh god. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? But I don't even get a chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Say over you. Uh, 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 hi, Sailin. Stay over you. Just now we weren't. <laughs> it's okay, Sailin. I just stopped by to say hi. Um, well, it, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so. So that's fun, right? Of course. Sayori beams. Y yeah so I'll see you tomorrow. Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Sayori waves the goodbye after her. Oh, not the sad music again, come on. Sayori, I thought you didn't want to come over today. Uh, well, I tried staying in my room. But my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come over here and see it for myself. See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri and how close you got to her. It makes me really happy that you made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start to fall down Sayori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Selin? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Sayori, don't say that. It's true, Sailor. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burden your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sayori looks away. I put my hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Selin. I'm really scared. 
What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that... That I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Seelin. I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And... And... That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods. Even if you don't understand all of your feelings, I know what you need the most right now. And that's what I'm going to give you. Sayori. Oh, I can say I love you or your dearest friend. Oh my god, let me save. I want to save both of these, but I have to pick one. I can't say no to Sayori after she said that to me. My heart belongs to Yuri, though. Oh my god. I'll go with dearest friend. I hope that doesn't break your heart. You'll always be my dearest friend. What you need most is for things to be like they always been. Monica told me the truth. She told me how much happier you seemed after I joined the club. I know you're struggling with some really difficult feelings right now, but please trust me that I know what's best and what will make you happy in the end. I promise I'll help you get things back the way they were. I... I see. Sayori forces a smile through an incredibly pained expression. Uh, is this what it feels like to get stabbed in the chest? Oh no, Sayori. Maybe I should have gone with the I love you. I should write a poem about this. Sayori, it's okay. This is just my punishment, remember? For being so selfish. So please, please don't worry about these stupid feelings. I know you're right. I knew this whole time that there's no happiness down that path. That's why I came here. Just so I could get the answer I needed to hear. And the other thing. You're also right that I just want it to go back to the way it was. I realize that now. You really do know me better than anyone, Seelin. I'll trust you with anything. Anything at all. So, Sayori's smile finally breaks. Oh wait, so Sayori's not mad? Or sad that I don't love her back? I don't know, that seems wrong. All of a sudden, she turns around and drops to her knees. Ah. Uh, Clutching her head with both hands, she screams as loudly as she can. Uh-oh. I'm so shocked that I don't know how to react. Sayori looks over her shoulder and flashes me a one more weak smile before turning around and running off. Sayori! I'm left helplessly standing in front of my house. Why am I feeling so horrible about this? There's nothing more that I could have done. The most I can do is support Sayori through her feelings and help her on the path that's right. But I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more or something different. I know these thoughts would continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. I'm going to give her everything I've got. Sayori will always be my dearest friend and secretly love her. And I'll do whatever it takes to put a smile on her face every day. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I considered going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. The banner Yuri and I painted is dry and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Sailing. You're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the one she prepared that has all the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. 
that, dummy. You'd think that on days this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday. As I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. Um, okay, so, uh, I didn't notice, but there's a file here. And it says, happy thoughts, except some letters are crossed out. I don't know when this got added. It must have been a little while ago, and I didn't notice. So, open. Let's see. Oh! Oh my. Oh no. Oh my god, is that Sayori? Shit. Oh my god. Anyway, back to the story. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all. Uh oh. Uh, you should take a little responsibility for her, Seelin. I mean, especially after your exchange with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? Monica, you know about that. Of course I do. I'm the club president, after all. But I stamp her, embarrassed. Did Sayori really tell her about it that quickly? About how I basically turned down her confession? Uh-oh. Yeah, I think I fucked up. That makes me really seem like the bad guy here. Y yeah it kind of does. But I'm the one who knows what's best for her, right? I would assume so. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so... Don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Oh god, that's a little creepy. Uh, Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt to chill down my spine after hearing that. No shit, I did too. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. Yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem was neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognized Natsuki and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Sayori's poem. It's different from the one she's practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. Get out of my head, 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 whoa! Get out of my head, get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished, it just stops moving. Oh shit. Uh what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Salen, what's wrong? Uh, nothing? This poem feels completely different from everything else they always written. But more than that, I... I changed my mind. I'm going to get Sayori, so... Uh, well, alright. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. <laughs> Don't strain yourself. Oh, great. <laughs> Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? Oh my god, I'm actually shaking. I should have tried a little bit harder for Sayori. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides... I told her yesterday that things would be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and what I want to give her. I reach Sayori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Where's Sayori's parents? I would like to know. Sayori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. My heart's like beating out of my chest right now, and I'm shaking uncontrollably. Probably because I'm scared as fuck right now. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house? Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on the door. Sayori? Wake up, dummy. 
There's no response. Uh-oh. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't that kind of a breach of privacy? Eh, a little bit, yeah. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Say, oh my god! Oh my god! What the hell? What the hell? Is this a nightmare? It, it, it has to be. This isn't real. There's no way this can be real. Sayori wouldn't do this. Everything was normal up until a few days ago. That's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Sayori I would be there for her. I told her I know what's best and that everything will be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How could I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Turning down her confession? That has to have been what pushed her over the edge. Oh no. Her agonized scream still echoes in my ears. Why did I do that to her when she needed me the most? Why was I so selfish? This is my fault. My swarming thoughts keep telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and gave her what I know she wanted out of our relationship, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. But I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never. 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 And, what? Oh, what the f fuck. So, Sayori's not in the game anymore. Let's see. Yeah, okay, she's not here anymore. Great. Uh, well, I guess it will start with the fucked up shit next time. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. I will see you all next time in another Doki Doki Literature Club video or whatever I make next. Goodbye for now. Doki.